When it comes to monster movies, there is no doubt we can trace everyone back to the source. To the one who made the mold, who created the Hollywood blockbuster and spawned a raft of imitators and filmmakers and creators that still felt to this day. It may not have been the first creature feature, but from the kaiju of Japan, the dinosaurs of Jurassic Park, through to the aliens of other worlds, all owe a huge debt to a 1933 movie about a giant gorilla whose fate is sealed as soon as his eyes fall upon a beautiful blonde from New York. The original King Kong, the eighth wonder of the world. Natural drama filmmakers Miriam C. Cooper and Ernest B. Shodashak had made their careers out of shooting wildlife pictures in far off lands, and then narrative fiction including the deeply subversive The Most Dangerous Game, a movie in which a shipwrecked crew are hunted for sport. Both men were adventurers, the product of the European wars of the early 20th century, every bit the filmmaking team that would later colour Kong's script. Shodashak's wife, Ruth Rose, was no wallflower. She had proven her ability to keep up with the boys and had a writer's flair that would inject the script with its humanity. Meanwhile, an Irish-American ex-cowboy turned animator, Willis O'Brien, was having success with what he called dimensional animation, a process where a puppet would be meticulously moved then shot frame by frame, creating an illusion of movement when played back, a process we now know as stop motion. He had done some work with Edison and beyond, including 1923's box office hit, The Lost World. But his current picture, Creation, had stalled after the new head of RKO Studios, David O. Selnick, decided cuts had to be made, else the studio was ceased to be. Cooper and Shodashak scooped up the Creation team and some of its footage, and shot a test reel for the studio, most of which ended up in the final movie. The team employed every trick in the book and invented several new ones. The animation stages were augmented with beautiful glass plate paintings. In some cases, live action actors were projected onto the miniature sets frame by frame as the giant animals were animated. In others, completed bestial animations were projected onto full size stages, allowing the actors to time their interactions with the creatures. The test footage was a success and the picture was greenlit with production moving forward to completion. King Kong was released to riotous effect. Estimates put the take between five to ten million dollars on a budget of 670,000, a return of 14.9 times the production costs. Compare this to the recent Skull Island which only made three times its budget, which today is considered a good return. So why does the original King Kong still hold up nearly 90 years later, especially compared to 2017's Kong Skull Island? It's certainly not the effects. Today's motion-captured animation hybrids show that there is nothing now impossible for the computer to create. The 33 Kong looks positively quaint in comparison. Now I think the problem is simple, the script. Many modern movies choose set piece over story. They are bland retellings of stories we've seen a million times. Joseph Campbell has gone from inspiring creators to merely being a crutch. It's not enough to throw things at the screen or crank up the volume to 11 or hire the rock. You've got to have a compelling story and script. That should be the bedrock of every show. Kong Skull Island is overfilled with bloat and weight and yet still manages to forget about character. This I believe in. This, not so much. The Cooper and Shodashak Ruth Rose script, on the other hand, feels real, the dialogue true. It makes you feel the drama in which a giant gorilla doesn't collapse under its own weight or the blonde from New York ends up a whiplashed bloody pulp in Kong's paws. Kong may be king, but so is the script. And you would think that after 90 years of filmmaking, this point would no longer have to be made. What's crazy about it? I don't know, but everybody around here is talking about that crazy fella that's running it. 